Welcome to the Dark Horse Chess Channel. Today's game is between James A. Leonard and Matthews. Leonard played this game blindfolded. James A. Leonard was a chess prodigy who died during the American Civil War. Leonard was known for his brilliant attacking style and blindfold abilities. Leonard enlisted in the Union Army and was captured after seven days of fighting. He died of disease in a prison camp. He was 20 years old. All right, the game began. E4, E5, knight to F3, knight to C6, bishop to C4, and bishop to C5. This is the Gioco Piano. B4 is played next, and that is the Evans Gambit. The engine rates B4 as the sixth best move and rates the position as exactly equal. Ah, let's go back to the board. Here B4 was played. This is the Evans Gambit. White sacrifices a pawn in order to get a huge lead in development and hopefully a devastating attack against the Black King. Here Black played Bishop takes B4. White responded by C3, making the Bishop move again. And the Bishop moved back to C5. Are the engine rates this position exactly equal? You can castle here or play d4. The point is, after playing d4, black is going to have to move the bishop again for the third time, and white obtains a huge lead in development. Now let's go back to the board. White castled. d6 was played. White played d4. e takes d4. c takes d4. And here black's only move is to go bishop to b6. If black plays bishop to b4, then white plays queen to b3, and white has a dual attack, bishop takes f7, or he could push the d5 pawn, and then after the knight moves, white just plays queen takes bishop. At the queen to b3, the engine gives white a 2.79 point advantage. The best move for black is to just play knight to f6 and let white play d5. Right, let's go back to the board. Black played bishop to b6, white played knight to c3, and black played knight to f6. Since the black king can castle on the next move, white needs to launch the attack now and prevent the black king from castling. White's plan is to push e5, and after d takes e5, white can move the bishop to a3 and prevent the black king from castling. White played e5, black played d takes e5, and white did go bishop to a3, the black king cannot castle, and black responded by playing knight takes d4. Here white has three good options. White can play queen to a4 check, and after bishop to d7, white can play knight takes e5. Black cannot take the queen because a bishop takes f7, and that is checkmate. So here, black is forced to move his knight back to e6. After bishop takes knight, f takes e6, queen to c4, the engine gives white a 1.77 point advantage. White has a big attack. The black king still cannot castle, and white is looking to move his rook to e1 with an attack against the e6 square and move the other rook over to d1 with attack against the pinned bishop on d7. Right, let's go back to white's 12th move. White could also play knight takes d4. The best move for black is to go bishop takes d4 and then white has this crazy move, knight to b5 sacrificing the exchange. If black takes the rook, white responds by going queen takes bishop with an attack against the undefended e5 pawn and a devastating attack against the black king. The best move for black is to go knight to g4 and defend the pawn, but this allows rook to d1 attacking the queen. Black could block by flying bishop to d7. And then the best move for white is to move his bishop back to e2 attacking the knight, and then take the e5 pawn with the queen. 
Best move for black is to defend the e5 pawn with an f6 and let white take the knight. But here white can also play queen to c1, threatening the fork against the king and the rook. At this point, the best move for black is to move his king, the king to f7, and white could play bishop takes g4. And here the best move for black is to sacrifice the queen by playing bishop takes knight, rook takes queen, rook takes rook. After queen to b1, white has a huge advantage. All right, let's go back to white's 12th move. In the game, white played knight takes e5 with an attack against the f7 square. Black played the best move, bishop to e6. White responded by playing rook to e1 with the x-ray attack against the black king. And black played the best move again, c5. c5 defends the knight on d4 and also allows the black king to castle. The engine gives white a one-point advantage with the best move for white being queen to a4. Black's response is to move his king to f8. On white's 14th move, white did play queen to a4 check and black blocked by playing knight to d7. Here white has two good options. White could play bishop takes e6, f takes e6, rook on a to d1 with x-ray attacks against the black queen, rook to c8, and now white has knight to e4 threatening a fork against the king and the rook. The best move here for black is to castle and just let white take the knight on d7. Now let's go back to white's 15th move. In a game, white played knight takes f7. Black responded by playing king takes f7. And then white played this beautiful move, rook takes e6. Black responded by playing knight takes e6. And then after rook to d1, the knight on d7 is pinned, and the knight on e6 is pinned. For black 17 move, the engine gives white a 0.71 point advantage. Black can stay in the game by playing knight to f6, allowing white to eventually take the queen on d8. In the game, black did not play knight to f6. Black played king to g6. White played bishop takes knight. Thank you very much. Black responded queen to e7, and here white did not play bishop takes knight. White is shooting for checkmate. White played queen to g4 check, queen to g5, bishop to f5 check, king to f6, rook to d6 check, king to e5, and rook to e6 is checkmate. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.